No, I'm down to like, you know, play on the board with you a little bit. Or like yeah. Do some shit, just cause my shit. I'm already uh, back used to that. It's whack. Do it. Hey! Oh, she said round two? Yeah! That was it! No, that was the one. Yeah, yeah, that was the one. We're gonna do a little QA. Room. Ask, ask, ask away. Do you wear clothes in the steam room? Um, No, I don't. You don't wear clothes? Nah, man. Damn. Nah. Where, where can they send some tracks to, Mr. Illmind? There's two ways. The best two ways to send tracks are to join my club, the Illmind Platinum Club. Go to. um illmindproducer.com and join my club or uh, you could submit to blapper crap on our podcast blap chat go to beatthread.com uh, b-e-a-t-t-h-r-e-a-d join the website it's free and you can upload your beats there and get critiques from other people and um, we do our segment on our podcast where we choose beats from that website and then we give you critique live on, on the podcast so um, that would be your best bet Dallas past the ox Texas. Past the Ox in Texas. Dallas. Yeah, um, we're working on Texas right now. Um, so for those who don't know, I, I'm starting to do these events where um, I go to different cities and we book like a private studio um, uh, like location. And then uh, we invite like 20 producers to come in and you basically play your music and uh, we just play your tracks and then like we're just kind of talking in, in, in like a direct kind of way where I'm like sitting there and like giving you feedback and helping you with any questions you have and stuff like that and it's a good opportunity to meet other people too in your city so we did shit how many did we do at like five in New York yeah um, we did uh, one in uh, LA Connecticut, Connecticut LA. LA so we're doing we're actually going to yeah. uh, Toronto, Toronto yeah. uh, uh, Baltimore and uh, Philly in October and we're also going to announce um, another LA date and I think we're doing Boston uh, in November so mm -hmm. keep keep out for that so go to my website illmindproducer.com if you're interested in coming to pass the aux but we're definitely planning Texas for sure yeah. um, definitely Dallas want to do Dallas Houston um, Austin so we'll see if you're a songwriter and you're looking for beats my f the first place I would look would be SoundCloud right excuse me go to SoundCloud because there's a, m most music producers live on SoundCloud right so you're, you're gonna find like hidden gems there you're gonna find like upcoming producers and um, it's just really easy to navigate so I would, the first place I would start would be SoundCloud go through you know different playlists another cool thing you can do is um, if you find a producer that you like on SoundCloud mm -hmm. f like follow that person and then see who else they follow so that you can kind of get a, a good tempo of like what kind of music they're into and uh, you can kind of see okay this person follows um, you know K Tronada and like Carmack and Soul Action and like Medicine so you know that particular kind of sound if that's like a sound that you're going for as a songwriter then you should navigate through those channels on SoundCloud so you can find similar artists and similar producers mm -hmm. and that would be the best way and then also too go to beat thread mm -hmm. go to beatthread.com and and there's a just a bunch of upcoming producers up there there's thousands of beats you can shuffle through them mm -hmm. you just gotta shoot your shot you know like mm -hmm. start online and then um, do some networking in person you know if you see a beat battle happening or um, any kind of event where you know like music producers or creators will be there then start networking that way and start going to these different events there's no yes or no but what I believe is that there's no um, perfect time there's no like perfect storm where it's like okay now is the time to quit my job and like pursue my passion full-time I think it's just like a conscious decision where you just kind of have to go for it or yeah. you really just have to go for it like you can't sit around and wait for 
someone to come scoop you or like change your life you know you just have to go for it and like huge risk it's very scary it seems very scary um, it seems risky and it, all of those things could definitely be true based on your situation you know like if you have a mortgage or rent you have kids or you know or if you're like 17 and you're living in mom's basement you have to make that decision for yourself but i think at, at some point you have to just go for it and um you know you have to be prepared to weather the storm and really just fucking pursue your passion and not let anyone stop you for me personally i didn't transition from like having a nine to five and then all these responsibilities and then doing music i fell in love with music like super early like it's funny because someone asked asked at what age 14 13. 13 i was just like shit i want to do this for the rest of my life so then when i graduated high school um i went to college for a bit and then i just dropped out and i was like man i'm gonna do this i was in my mom's basement for um six years broke like just broke no resources i didn't know anyone i didn't know where to start i just made music all day and um i weathered the storm and it was fucking hard but you know, I went through it and I did it, and um, that's my personal situation, right? So you know, listen, I'm not telling you to like quit your job now and go for it, but what I, what I am saying is that you're not gonna reach a point where it's like the perfect time to just do it. You know, there's no better time than to do it now, you know? So you just have to really analyze your situation and then just go for it. Barter system is everything, you know? Like, barter with people, if you, if you, are talented at designing clothing and you have like a clothing line but you make beats too then like use that as your hustle you know so like pitch your clothing to me you know what i'm saying or like pitch your clothing to like the hottest artist in your city you know pull up to the show and be like yo i got a shirt for you or and be persistent yo check out this check out that and if the clothes are good you know fashion and music go together like Producers, artists, like they want to look good, they're into fashion, um, you know, target it at that angle and try to get them, try to break the ice with your clothes. And then from there, you can kind of like start to organically kind of move into, yo, like I got beats too. You know what I'm saying? I produce. So if you're good at, if you're good at something, like use that as your advantage, you know, like if you can shoot video, that's your way in, you know, and if you're really good at it, the, find the demand, target it, and then from there execute and then utilize your, your other skills from there. So, you know, if you're doing clothing, that's easy, man. Just get your clothes to the right people. If you met, if you met a girl at a, at a, at a bar um, and you, you had a chat and you exchanged numbers, how many days would you wait to text her or call her? And what you think would be the right approach right it's the same it's the same uh approach same answer like if we just met and i gave you my number you're a producer and you want to link up with me do you think it would be appropriate to text me that night probably not i might not care but it might not be appropriate you know um you got to go with your gut go with your instinct you know it's never too late. It's never too late. It's never too late. It's never fucking too late. Especially for music production. Never too late. Do you. Yeah. You know, like, there's so many... You have so many years ahead of you. What does age have to do with anything? Nothing. All right. You know? 2 chains is 40. He just turned 40. He got his shit pop in... in when did 2 chains really pop? Like, 2011? No, when did he pop, though? 2012? Like with good music, about that, yeah. that was five years ago, it was 35. Never too late, 29, producing, that's nothing, you yeah. know? Go for it. It forced me to really just like make it a habit of like learning stuff and like really going out of my way to do research on learning how to do something, you know? So like, you know, kid, kid, a kid from Jersey sitting in mom's basement, no contacts, no audio engineer, no rappers to rap on my beats, no equipment, no musicians, nothing. I was forced to figure it all out, but I was hungry enough and passionate enough to 
figure it all out. I think it's similar to like glam, like you, right? Like you rap, but you didn't have beats, so you learned how to make beats. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, somebody was essentially making them for me, then eventually. You had to learn. I didn't have them anymore, and like I had to learn. So, yeah. 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 I went on a I went on a Twitter rant earlier today talking about like learning. You, you just have to do your shit. You know, like learn how to do it. That's the best way to um, accomplish what you need to do. Like, fuck waiting for people. Fuck that. You know, like, don't wait for people, but know that when people come into your life and they want to fuck with you it's on your terms because of what you did right so like people fuck with me because i make good beats right but like i didn't people didn't, no one taught me how to make beats i didn't go to school for beats i didn't have like a mentor and i didn't wait for someone to come in and teach me i fucking just did it like no resources or no idea how to do it and i like took the time and, and spent many years learning how to do it and i became good at it and that's why people you know like fuck with me because I got good at it so mm -hmm. I think it's just a process of like okay I need this particular thing let me take the time to like dig into it and learn it and be become good at it and then the right people will start coming right so like don't wait I hate like don't don't wait for people just do your research like who cares what I use like I can use fucking like Windows 98 like garage band but like i'm gonna execute what i what's in here right so like i can give you guys a laundry list of what i use and it wouldn't matter yep. like i have this put it this way i probably have the same vsts and the same shit that you guys have i have the same stuff i have the same drums you guys have the same exact drums that i have why because i put them out black kits you guys have everything you know so like don't worry about what I use, who gives a fuck? Don't worry about what Timbaland uses or Pharrell. Like, they, they, they're using their heads, you know? Like, they just have it in them. So, um, don't worry about that. Yeah. <clears throat> I woke up, made beats until 10, 11, 12, 1 a.m. and I went to bed and I woke up and did the same thing. Literally, weekends too. Um, uh, six years straight, 365 six years 365 times six beats just beats sampling beats going record shopping looping drums chopping trying this type of beat this type of beat let me make a pop beat let me do a trap beat let me do fucking boom bap like let me try this let me try singing let me try you know like sound design engineering like i, I taught myself pro tools because mm -hmm. I, I had to you know what i mean like i didn't have anyone to mix my beats so i had to learn that shit and now I can do it with my eyes closed, you know? Um, six years, you know what I'm saying? Like, took me a long ass time. Yeah. Hey, what's up, dude? How are you, man? Good. I'm old enough now, yo. Yes. Do you remember that? Of course. Yeah. Of course. Now you here. <laughs> how, 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 how do you like your experience so far? Oh, I love it. It's good, right? Oh, yeah. Now I'm finally like, enjoying the, the beat showcases yep. and stuff. I'm so excited. Yeah. Did you get, get to meet some, some good people? Yeah, I'm going good. to Atlanta for the Beats and Beats. So yeah. I won my first showcase, so I was like... Congrats, man. Thank you. Now you're in New York. Yeah. <laughs> Doing it out here. It's good. Yeah, it's funny. I still remember that Sunday. We just out in the front, just talking and, and stuff like that. It's yeah. So when you when you get to the point where your tracks are good enough, mm -hmm. and now obviously the next step is okay. How do I get on an album? Exactly. It's really just like, and it goes down to, so Atlas is one of my co-hosts on my podcast. I don't know if you listen to my podcast, <laughs> Blab Chat, but we talk about like placements all the time mm -hmm. and, you know, just different things to kind of like apply right. to get placements and really relationship is like a big thing. Right. So like, honestly, when you're making tracks that are like already this good, mm -hmm. It's really just relationships, right? And exactly. like patience, yeah, relationships, and yeah. just like a lot timing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the only thing I would say is just like it's only a matter of time. Like, yeah. like I'm sure at some point something will break. Technically, my first placement was uh, an independent artist named Acrobatic. Um, 
and he was signed to an indie label and that was the first time that something I produced ended up on like a, a store like in a store so um, but I'll I'm gonna talk about my um, placement with 50 cent because that was the placement that really like turned it all around for me financially um, just like the people I met after that placement really just changed everything so um, I got my first technically my first big placement with 50 cent in 2006 the same year that I met Sis. Um it was a song I did called um, uh, oh shit I don't remember oh make a movie out of them right and it was actually on a 50 cent mixtape um, but back then the mixtape budgets, especially with G-Unit, where they were still paying producers. So I got my royalties, I got, like, I got paid my upfronts and everything, got my points. Uh, I, at the time, I was working with a lot of independent artists. So I was working with, like, Buckshot, and, like, Helta Skelta, and, like, Elder Sensei, and, like, Little Brother. Raise your hand if you remember Little Brother. Oh, most people, good. So that was when I was coming up with, like, Ninth Wonder, and, like, Fonte and Pooh, good friends of mine, and we kind of came up. So 2006, I'm on MySpace, and uh, I, get a, I get a message on MySpace from this guy named D. Prosper, and he's like, yo, what's up, Illmind? Um, I heard some of your stuff. I like the Little Brother stuff. I heard some of your beats. I'm an A&R over at G-Unit. Send me some tracks. We're looking for some beats. So I was like, all right, bet. So I went into my folder, I, I got like, I made a folder of like 30 of like my hottest tracks at the time. And, um, and I sent them over to him. And then uh, I got a message back a couple, like a couple hours later and he's like, yo, I love these tracks. Um, I want you to come up to the city and meet up with the president of G-Unit, Sean Money XL. And I was like, fuck, yeah, hell yeah, I'll do it. Like, when do you want to meet? So then um, a week later, I ended up coming up to a studio in Chelsea and I met up with them and we we're on a rooftop and I'm with Shaw Money and D Prosper. And the first thing Shaw Money tells me, he's like, yo, he's like, what, what are you smoking when you make beats, man? Like, you, you like that Filipino fire. He called me Filipino fire at the time. Um, so I'm like, you know, I don't smoke. Like, I don't really drink. Like, I just make beats. So he was like, man, I love your shit. I want to, you know, work out like a management deal with you, like a, like a natural, like G unit deal. So at the time, Shaw Money XL had a company called, um, uh, uh, oh shit, what was it called? Money Management. And at the time, he was managing uh, high tech, or like co-managing high tech, uh, Jake One, Black Jeruz, um, uh, the business, right? And so I became part of that squad, and it was just, from there on, it was just me feeding him tracks. Like, I would just make beats, send them to D, send them to Shaw. And uh, eventually I got a placement. It was, I remember it was the day after my birthday and uh, I got a text from, from D Prosper and he was like, yo, congratulations, you just broke your cherry. 50 just recorded to one of your beats. And I was like, oh shit. So then he sent me the actual song. I didn't know he was gonna do that. And uh, it was make a movie out of him. And that was the song where he was talking shit about Diddy at the end. Um, I thought I was gonna get in trouble. Like, damn, I don't want no problems with like <laughs> bad boy and shit. The only thing that felt different was that I had actual money so that I could move out of my mom's basement because I was there for six years grinding, broke, getting yelled at every day because I'm Filipino and fi <laughs> Filipino parents. I'm supposed to be a nurse right now, guys, uh, or an accountant. <laughs> this is me right here. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, but I do know all that shit, though. I want to meet more peers, more people I look up to, more a and R is like, Shamani, who are you in the studio with? Let me come with you. Let me just be a fly on the wall. So I was really going out of my way to get in the rooms with people and get to know people. And just that whole era, like 2000, I would even say like 2004 to 2010 to me was like the era where like a lot of us got to know each other. That was when I met, like I said, Vitamin D, Jake One. I met Knotts. He was like just coming off of like, producing um, on Kanye's album, what was the Lil Wayne shit. Um, but he's a legend, right? And like, so I kept meeting all my peers and all these people I looked up to. I finally met Just Blaze. I finally met like Focus and Don Cannon and all these guys. And um, I just got to know each other and it became a community. Like they knew who I was, you know? So um, 
that was it. It was for me, it was networking and just getting out there getting to know people. But I think the thing that really helped me was not being too concerned with like, I need to get a placement, placement, placement. It was more just, all right, who can I meet that are like at my level, right? Other producers, other musicians, other interns at like random labels. Like, let me get to know them. And fast forward 10 years later, some of these interns are executives and we joke around. And um, when they have humongous projects, they're calling me because we went to fucking Hooters back in 2006 and they like me. Yep. That's it. Right. And so I was just planting seeds. I didn't know I was doing it. I was just not being a dick, meeting people and like working hard as fuck. And like it just the, the chess pieces fell into place. So peace, peace. Right, I'm about to take a picture with you? No, not at all. I got you. I got you. Thank you, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, good to meet you, man. You too. I appreciate all the knowledge today, everything like that. Yeah. I'm sure. The whole rap thing, like rap placements, it's, it's different, but it's actually almost the same, and I'll tell you why. It's all about one of two things, or both. You either know the button pusher directly, where they're like, oh, fuck with you, let's go. Yeah. Or, um, or you're hot enough. Yeah. If, you're sh if, you're, if your shit is what they consider, oh, they're, you know, they're relevant or they're, then like, let's fuck with them. It's either or. Hey. We have no Sampling to me is really just sort of, I'm gonna get a little deep, like tapping, tapping sort of into your like subconscious and what you're musically influenced by without really knowing. So like, you know, when you hear a soul sample, some of us in this room immediately will jump towards like making it like boom bap, right? Some of us in here might make it into a trap type of track where you're loading, you know, 808s and, 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 and 808 kicks and all that stuff, right? Um, but really those decisions are made in, on a subconscious level, so you're not actively thinking about it, you're just sort of doing it. Like when you have a sample chop on your pads or on your keyboard and you're just kind of freestyling, you're, you're freestyling based on what you're influenced by. Um, and so I think Jimmy hit it right on the nose, you know, I think the trick to sampling music is having a diverse sort of catalog in your subconscious to where you can tap into those influences at any given moment. So if you only listen to 70s soul, then you can't necessarily tap into, you know, um, 130 BPM 90s house grooves because you're not really well versed in that kind of music. And um, I agree, I think listen to everything because if you've been listening to trap music for the past 10 years, you might listen to 90s house and fucking fall in love with the shit to where you're creating it and you're pretty good at it. Um, and so I really believe that. Raise your hand if you like going to the record store and digging for samples. Raise your hand if you like going to YouTube. Uh, raise your hand if it doesn't matter where you go, you just want it. Yeah. I think, um, I think sampling is sort of this preferred thing where you go into it knowing that if you score a big record or a big placement, you're gonna give away a big part of your publishing, most likely. But that's, you know, I'd rather have 10% of a big record than 0% of no record at all. Right, so um, that's sort of the mentality you want to just always remind yourself when you're a sample producer, I guess, quote unquote. Um, but I think that the more you have, the better. Like all of you, all of us should be fucking sample digging whores in here. Like, <laughs> like collect that shit. Go to the record store. Like, go go to Jersey and go to a random city and like I'm not saying like rip off an old lady, but I kind of am. Like. Go there and they have a crate and say, yo, I'll give you the whole, I'll give you 20 bucks for the whole crate and like take the whole crate, you know, like go.
go to YouTube and fucking rip everything, you know, because um, you just never know what sample could be that next really great idea. And the more you have, the better. They're like lottery tickets. Mm -hmm. The more you have, the bigger your chances of, uh, of winning, right? So collect them. So it's just two of you guys in a room together creating and you're sort of butting heads sometimes yes. because he's like, yo, leave it like that. And you're like, no, I have an idea. Yeah. Um, this is what I would say. I would say the thing that I learned from about collaboration is not all things work out the way that you want them to. Um, it's, it's like being in a relationship. Like some relationships are like really great the first week and then they suck and then you break up, right? And sometimes you don't break up. Yeah. Uh, just do it until it's just no longer fun. Okay. Like if working with him stresses you out, then like you shouldn't form a clique with this person because do you wanna do you wanna live the next five years, ten years of your life stressed out dealing with him? Okay. Maybe not. You know what I mean. So balance out the good and the bad. Like if if it's more enjoyable and more of a positive experience than it is negative, then maybe it's worth pursuing. Okay. But if it's just stressful, like and he's calling you and you're like, oh fuck, him again. You gotta cut that person out of or your you life. Guys and are I, always just arguing. About yeah, it. and I know that sounds like you know like harsh but it's just the reality of it like sometimes the chemistry is there sometimes it isn't and you got to cut the fat sometimes you know you never want to play your shit for someone and then be like uh oh, i evoked no emotion from that no like hate my shit like i want you to fucking hate this shit so much or i want you to be obsessed with it that's a good place for an artist i think you want that heavy opinion otherwise what are you doing it for you know the uh, is I'd rather hear a no. Life a, yeah. is not supposed to be eh. It's just like, <laughs> yo, bold. Just gotta be bold, you know?